Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about acute cholecystitis. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and then check out ninjanerd.org, where we have all of our notes and illustrations for all the lectures that we put up here on YouTube. And let's talk about acute cholecystitis, also known as inflammation of the gallbladder. How did we get to this point? What is going on? Why is our gallbladder inflamed? So some causes of acute cholecystitis are going to be our cholelithiasis, or these gallstones, or bacteria that can get into our gallbladder. So right here I have drawn up for us our stomach, we have our esophagus going into our intestines, we have our gallbladder here, our cystic duct, and our common bile duct, right? And what we're looking at here is an indication of something that when we eat, there's a response, and when that response is disrupted. So let's talk about it real quick. When we eat, right, food's gonna come on in into the stomach, right? Say you had uh, something, something fatty or greasy like a piece of pizza, right? So you have this yummy pepperoni pizza here. And when we eat, our body goes into the, the food goes into our intestine, into our small intestine. And eventually it'll get a trigger that says, hey, I need help to break down this food. I need help to uh, absorb this food. I need help with all this. So it's gonna send our cholecystokinin or our CCK message into our blood our blood is going to talk to our gallbladder and it's gonna say, hey, send me some of that bile, baby. I need bile. And that bile's gonna come on down and eventually make its way in and help, okay? Great, that means we're gonna be able to help digest, right? Get our food digested. But what happens is when we have some type of lithiasis, our cholelithiasis, right? So we have maybe a gallstone that's been down the stum or in the uh, gallbladder here and for some reason it gets, travels and gets caught. So now we are stuck in our common bile duct or maybe it's in the cystic duct, right? Different areas will cause different symptoms a little bit, but overall, very similar start. The bile now is going to get blocked. And when that bile gets blocked, it starts to backflow, right? Then we start to have this increase in inflammation in the gallbladder here. So our gallbladder starts to get inflamed, gets a little bigger. And we know from nursing that when we have an inflammation and irritation to any type of whining, we can get some pain, right? And remember, the name of this is cholecystitis or inflammation of the gallbladder. So we're gonna have this inflammation here causing some pain. And why is that? Why do some people get gallstones that possibly cause a blockage? Well, they found that it's common in females, most, mostly it happens more in females than in males. It can also occur from diet. Now that diet can be a high fat, low calorie, low protein diet. So eating things that are really greasy, really fatty. And then also obesity has to come with it as well. So these risk factors, if you're somebody who, especially a female with a very poor diet and maybe is overweight, we may have a nice brewing area for an acute cholecystitis, or at least gallstones that are getting in the way. So when we have this blockage, we're gonna exhibit a lot of symptoms. So let's talk about those now. So we have a patient that's coming in and commonly with the signs and symptoms of our acute cholecystitis is that we can have some issues or pain, right? We talked about that. And where is our gallbladder? Our gallbladder is located on the underside of our liver in our right upper quadrant. So our patient's gonna have pain in that right upper quadrant, or sometimes they can even have referred pain that goes to their shoulder or their scapula. So it's gonna be the right shoulder pain, also scapula. All right, then our patient's not happy about it because along with this pain, they can start having issues like nausea and vomiting. They may exhibit a low grade fever depending on the type of um, infection or if they have bacteria in there or infection from this cholecystitis as well. If the blockage has been going on for a long period of time, this person can be ill as well. So it's nausea, vomiting, right quadrant pain or shoulder scapula pain. They even say they're back because patients don't know for sure what, what hurts. They're saying, I don't know what hurts back here. And with all that, there's one simple test that we can use in order to find out what's going on with our patient. So we wanna think back to when we're doing our abdominal assessment. We have our patient laying back. We're gonna look, listen, and feel. When we look, nothing really seems to be abnormal for the most part, but when we start to feel, we are going to palpate, right? So when we palpate, the patient may have real um, pain, almost withdrawing, 
from pain or palpation of the right upper quadrant. And that is called the Murphy sign. All right, Murphy's sign. So that right upper quadrant pain with palpation, we're pressing in there and they're saying, ooh, that, ah, I don't like that, that really hurts, right? And all of a sudden we're gonna say, hmm, that's a positive Murphy's sign. And then we're also gonna say, hey, when was the last time you ate? And they're gonna say, hmm, two, three hours ago. And you're gonna, oh, okay, does this pain usually come on after you eat? Well, sometimes, yeah, it's worse than others. So that word post postprandial, meaning after eating is when they're experiencing most of their pain. And we wanna start thinking about too, when I talked about earlier where we have the gallbladder and we have the cystic duct and then the common bile duct, right? And when we have that blockage here, if it's lower in the common bile duct, that is showing us that there might be some backflow into our liver causing some issues and this patient can actually even be jaundiced. But the whole point of this video is to just understand that when there is a blockage somewhere from the gallbladder to do its job and release bile is where we can have that backflow and we can get that pain. And what are the, what are the key signs of the pain? We're looking for right upper quadrant pain, we're looking for, for postprandial pain and a positive Murphy sign. So what are we gonna use to diagnose this patient? Maybe it's not quite clear, you're like, uh, they have a positive Murphy sign, but they're also saying some other things that, mm, I don't know, because abdominal pain is one of the biggest common complaints that patients can come in with. They just say, my stomach hurts, I don't feel good, hurts down here. So we can use a couple different ways to test them and see what's going on with the ones that the emergency room will go to right away is either the ultrasound or CT, and that's so we can just visually we can visualize a stone possibly, right? We can see a possible blockage. We're able to see that right away. There's also the HIDA scan, and the HIDA scan is when we can use some contrast, right? They can use IV oral contrast and allow us to see a blockage based upon what's going on with the contrast. We also have the ERCP, which is able to use a scope that can go in and possibly see if there's a blockage, and the MRCP, right? and this is some imaging as well. And all of these are going to at least help us see where this blockage is. Is it in the common bile duct? Is it in the cystic duct? Is there even a blockage at all or is it something completely different that we can't see? Some of these are also gonna be able to show us if there's inflammation around the gallbladder. So we have a patient, we get one of these tests done, we say, okay, there's some blood work in there that also indicates there's something going on with your gallbladder, we definitely see stones, we are going to treat you. Now. Treatment starts with supportive care, meaning we are going to treat their pain, we are going to treat their nausea, maybe they need some fluid, crystalloids, and we are gonna help them through this. And this sometimes is a common type of treatment for patients that come in until we get a definitive answer of if they're gonna get surgery and what type of surgery they're gonna be getting. They also may have a chance to go through the extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. So this is the word you probably heard before, which is lithotripsy, which I think is just such a neat uh, procedure that we can do is where we send shockwaves, basically, think of this as like shockwaves, and they go to the stones and try to bust them up into little pieces. Because when we bust them up into little pieces, then when they go through, they aren't blocking that lumen of the bile duct and they're not being um, occluding the area so that the bile can backflow. So now we're gonna have that nice flow that we need in order to get the bile out. And then if all else fails, they're gonna get the cholecystectomy, which is they're gonna get their gallbladder taken out. Uh, and that is another procedure that they plan for, that they'll schedule them for, and hopefully it doesn't have to be emergent, but they're able to get it out. And then that is our acute cholecystitis. cholecystitis. So I hope you guys like this video. As always, until next time.